a constant meditation on and thinking on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I have to, after all of these years of trying to faithfully serve the Lord by the power of the Spirit sealed inside of me by the grace of God, um, I, I still have to preach the gospel to myself. Um, just a few months ago, I was down um, preaching near my hometown um, and had a little bit of a break, and so I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of go see some of the houses that I, I got saved uh, right before my 18th birthday, so I went down there to kind of um, take some pictures of some of the old houses I lived in and show them to my kids when I got home. And So I went down there, and I drove into town, and I saw this field that I got in a fight with with this kid named Sean in front of a whole bunch of people. And I, I mean, I'm not a fair fight kind of guy. I mean, are you looking at me? I don't have that kind of physique. I mean, I've got to take a cheap shot and, and keep wailing until somebody breaks it up. And so um, some bad, dark things that happened in that field to the point where wherever Sean is to this day, if God hadn't saved him, he, if you mentioned my name to him, I could, he would flush. And then I drove by um, one of the houses that we lived in and, and took a picture and um, just immediately began to be filled with some of these memories of some of the things that occurred in that house. You know what I felt? Shame. And, and then I drove by a Jimmy Herford's house and remembered his 16th birthday party and was immediately just filled with shame. And so I get back in my car and I'm driving back up to preach and the entire drive there I'm being accused and not by the Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit accuses, it's sweet, isn't it? When the Holy Spirit convicts, there's a sweetness to it. Not so when it's the lies of the enemy. And so, I mean, I'm driving, and here's, I'm fighting with myself because I'm in my heart having these thoughts. You, oh, you're going to you know, talk to them about a, what a man of God, you know, you, you are and what a man of God they're supposed to be? That, that's what you're going to say? You can point guys towards the gospel? What do you think Sean thinks about your gospel? What do you think Holly thinks about your gospel? What do you think most of your friends in high school think about that gospel? What do you think? And I'm, I mean, I'm literally going, man, how am I supposed to do that? I'm, I'm going to preach on believing the gospel and I'm having to wrestle with myself to believe it myself. And it was somewhere in the middle of that that the promise of the covenant and the blood of Jesus Christ and the knowledge of scripture really defeated what was the work of the enemy because I got to say, no, that man Chandler's dead. He's, he was, he was a peace, man. He, he should never say anything about Jesus Christ. Good thing Christ killed him on the cross. Good thing that the new Matt Chandler is holy and righteous, and not because he is, but because it was granted to him. And, and now all of a sudden, I get to walk in gospel power. Now I get to walk in gospel power. Do not, please, do not assume the gospel. Don't assume it. It has to be explicit, and it has to constantly be explicit. If you assume it, so Dr. Moeller in his intro talk to this whole thing, reference Christian Smith, um, moralistic therapeutic deism. You assume the gospel, that's all they're heal. That's all they will hear. Do this, don't do that, go here, don't go there. They will not understand that their righteousness is blood-bought. Don't assume it. We, we baptize tons of 20 year olds who will say to us in our baptism class uh, grew up in church never heard the gospel now we always want to press on that because sometimes you just don't have ears to hear and so we'll always go did you take any notes when you were in youth group yeah yeah i did go back and look at your notes and tell me that you didn't hear the gospel and a lot of them come back and go, no i just heard the gospel i just didn't i mean i just guess i didn't have ears to hear but there's an amazing amount of young men and, and young women who were told don't drink beer don't have sex don't listen to secular music now should we call young people to holiness Absolutely. Is holiness possible outside of the working of the Holy Spirit to regenerate us in Christ? No. And listen, even if they didn't have sex, didn't touch beer, and didn't listen to anything but Sandy Patty, does that in the end redeem them? No. They're just nerdy lost kids. Make the gospel explicit. Preach it week in and week out. Well, people will get tired of hearing it. Okay, well, I've been doing it for nine years. I, I, they don't get tired of hearing it. They get tired of hearing it. Okay, now, the, the third thing that gets us into remembering in such a way that fixes our rejoicing problem, regenerate hearts, a constant meditation on the gospel, and, and then I'll, I'll throw this out there thinking that maybe it'll get me in trouble, that, that you would walk by the Spirit and not by flesh. Once again, out of Galatians. That you would walk according to the Spirit. Um, I want to stay 
deeply tuned in to my affections. Like when I no longer marvel, when I'm no longer overwhelmed, when I'm no longer stirred up and inflamed by the fact that God in his mercy saved me. Like I didn't save me, he saved me. I, never, I had a plan for me, it wasn't his plan for me. Right, like he came and got me, I wouldn't look at I moved from California to Texas and happened to lock her next to a guy in football, happened to, who, who came up to me and said, hey, I need to talk to you about Jesus, when do you wanna do that? N not, hey, would you like to hear about Jesus? Like, I, I didn't, it, it, in his word, it wasn't an option. I mean, he was gonna tell me, he's just, he did let me pick the place. Where do you want to have the conversation? I mean, it's happening, but where do you want? You want to do it at practice? You want to do it afterwards? You want to do it? So I want to stay dialed into the fact that he came and he saved me. I want remembering to lead to rejoicing. And when that's not taking place, I want to be nervous and I want to get around other brothers who can help me work through why I'm not marveling at what should be more spectacular than anything else in the universe.